Hello all, and welcome back. In today's video, we're going to be seeing if we can produce rubies through a thermite reaction. I was recently watching a video by Nighthawk and Light, where he took chromium oxide and he mixed it with alumina, and then he melted it using a little arc melter. Now, he did this because alumina, with the impurity of chromium oxide, gives you a nice red gem, also known as a ruby. Rubies are primarily aluminum oxide. Now, I got to thinking, is there a reaction that I can produce this with, where aluminum oxide heats up with the chromium oxide, or if I can take a vessel and try to do the same reaction just on a larger scale? And I thought, hey, can't I take aluminum powder, mix it with the chromium oxide, and do a thermite reaction? The aluminum powder will produce aluminum oxide and bond to the oxide in the chromium to produce chromium metal. And this reaction isn't 100% efficient. So the chromium oxide, if I put a surplus in there, it'll be an impurity. So hopefully some of the aluminum oxide produced will react with the chromium and produce some rubies. So let's see if we can do this. So this is the overall reaction and we need to make sure this reaction will work first. We do this by knowing that aluminum falls higher on the activity series than chromium. And if this does happen, aluminum will react with the chromium and replace it to form the oxide. And by checking the scale, we know that aluminum is more reactive. So this reaction will theoretically work. The next important thing is to figure out the mix that we need to do with a stoichiometric amount. So we plug all our numbers into the calculator, and we get by mass, we're gonna need a 2.81 to one ratio of aluminum to chromium oxide. Let's mix this up and see if we can get the reaction to take place. So here's our two beakers. We got our oxide here, and we got our aluminum here. Now I did 42.15 grams of oxide and 15 grams of aluminum, which this gives our 2.1. 8, 1 to 1 ratio. Now with thermite reactions, you want to go larger than smaller. This is so the reaction can take place and there's enough thermal mass there for it to carry on and for your metal to have enough heat there so it wants to collapse down. So you really don't want to do anything smaller than a 50 gram reaction unless you're doing like something, let's say copper thermite, which depending on how big it'll have a nice explosion, which you want to be wary of that because it's kind of dangerous. Another danger is chromium oxide is quite toxic, so we want to be careful when handling this and not to poison ourselves. This is a common issue with chrome plating, where they use chromium to plate metal to make it more protective, that there's quite toxic effects of chromium. Now this chromium is sticking together, and I don't know the moisture content of this, and I want to figure it out and make sure there's nothing in here that's going to stop the reaction from taking place. So I'm just going to throw this onto a hot plate and let it sit and warm for a little bit to try to evaporate any water if there is any there. It's nice on the hot plate and we're going to let it sit for a little bit and drive off any if there is any moisture there. I don't see any water coming off, so we can take this off. It's just that it's in a powder form, so that's why it's sticking together. Better safe than sorry. Now that our oxide has cooled back down to room temperature, let's mix it with aluminum. Now you can just pour these together and stir it around. That doesn't always mix it the best, so I'll be using the bag method. Bag method, as the name implies, uses a Ziploc bag, and you mix your compounds in here. It gives, this gives a way better mix. Now we have our material all nice and mixed up. Let's throw it into a vessel we can heat up and get the reaction going. I 
inserted a sparkler and let's go outside and light it and see our reaction. Okay, here we are set outside. We got the torch. Let's light it and see if a reaction takes place. It looks like the sparkler went out and no reaction took place. It burned down at the bottom, but no reaction. Let's figure out why this happened. So why did our sparkler fail to light our thermite mixture? There's a variety of things that could be affecting this. The first one, there could be moisture in there which causes the reaction not to happen but I dried out the materials before, or aluminum doesn't soak up water. The oxide was dried before, so it's not that. The next thing is they could be not mixed that well, but I mixed it in a bag, and bag method is one of the best ways for mixing compounds like this, so I don't think that's the problem. What's probably the issue here is the sparkler doesn't reach a high enough temperature to set off the reaction, or this thermite combination has such a high reaction temperature that it needs to start off with that it just can't sustain itself just from the sparkler alone. So how do we lower this? How do we get this reaction to take place? Well, we can add another material that lowers that temperature in which the reaction starts to take place and gonna go. We do this by adding something known as an oxidizer. Now here I have potassium nitrate. We mix the potassium nitrate into our mixture which will lower the temperature it needs to activate and allow our reaction to take place. And I went ahead and dried this, so this is in some anhydrous potassium nitrate. Let's mix some in and then set off the reaction once again. Everything is thrown back in the bag now, and let's add two grams of potassium nitrate to our mixture. Seal up the bag and let's start mixing again. Okay, it's now thoroughly mixed. Let's transfer it back to our reaction vessel and go back outside. Back outside, and I changed the vessel that I want to do the reaction with in. This is some kale wool, which I just bound up so that this will hold the heat a lot better and it won't add any impurities there besides the kale wool melting, of course. This is made out of metal, so the metal will be impurities there. So let's transfer that over. Stick the sparkler in and light it.
Looks like it melted right through the kale wool. Let's give it some time to cool and we'll check back up on it. Some time has now passed and it's relatively cool. Let's bring it back inside and see if, what we produced. Here is our slag and our chromium metal and hopefully some rubies. Now, chromium is present in there still as the green powder, and hopefully that was able to make some impurities in the aluminum oxide form. We can tell that they're rubies because they'll glow underneath a black light, which I have right here. They'll glow a nice red color. So let's hit the lights, and I'm in a dark corner of the workshop, and hopefully we'll see some red glowing. You can ever so slightly see some surface rubies here. Now, these rubies aren't going to be that large. They're actually quite small, and they're most likely not that large. They're just probably sitting on top of the metal slag, and are probably just a few microns thick. Now, some of that light reflecting back was just the black light hitting it and reflecting back. Right there is probably the best, right above my top of my finger, is probably the best specimen in this whole entire setup. It's the one that glows the brightest red and has a nice red color to it. There is a few other spots where you can see some red ruby color, but these, once again, are quite horribly made. and. They serve no purpose besides just the fact that they were able to be created through a thermite reaction. I suppose if I did a larger reaction with more volume and a better heat capacitance to the device, I could probably get some larger rubies to form. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time. If you like my content, please consider subscribing. If you like the video, drop a like. And if you have any suggestions for future videos or any questions about the current one, Drop those in the comments section below. And thanks for watching.